He also recently had a beef. Something like that. With someone in, uh, like they was getting, like they was talking about praying all the time and going around and speaking the word and all this stuff. And I thought that was cool. And for a couple of days we hung out, we smoked and we drank. We just hung out all day. After two days, I was like, that's enough of that. Like, you know, I'm not a kid anymore. I, I try my best not to just sit around and smoke and drink anymore and do something positive in my life. And, um, like, he wanted me to go to a hotel with him the third day, and I'm like, nah, dude. Uh, I was like, I, I'm going to, like, continue, like, with my training and get on down the road and try to move my life on so I can quit living in a tent out in the wilderness and stuff. And, uh, something like the wilderness, right? <laughs> this ain't quite it. I, I've been in the wilderness. I showed you guys the wilderness before where I was chopping down freaking forest. And I was trying to set my base up there, but I got worried because the cops showed up at 3 a.m. And then the, uh, I had a little dream. I'm not sure what happened, but then I woke up and there was uh, city vehicles around me. So maybe maybe they was actually trying to talk to me, and that was like the dream, wake me up. Um, either way, <laughs> it, was, it was not the most positive thing either way. Uh, so I did not get to set my tent up in the wilderness in the middle of an awesome looking jungle. Um, even though I had built a little campsite and begun that. Um, so anyways, like uh, I was trying to tell him at night, I was like, dude, like, like, like this is getting on my nerves. Like what you're talking about here. Like I've been fighting for your rights. I've been fighting for you and all this stuff. And uh, he, he didn't really get that. And the next morning, man, he got a phone call from his probation officer. And they were talking about Southeast. And if you guys know, I made a video about Southeast before. And then the probation officer was talking about getting him back on his schizophrenic injections. And if you guys know... I made videos on the schizophrenic injections before. So, I had told this dude the night before, like, can you just calm down? Like, I've been fighting for you. Like, I don't, I don't need to sit down and pray all day. I do work. I do the work, so I don't just preach. And uh, we don't know where he is now. We can only assume that when the cops got, pulled him away from where he was last, that he is now in the system. He's now getting his... They, they already told him before he let the cops pull him away, before he let it go that far, that he was going to get his schizophrenic injections and go to Southeast. And I made documentaries on Southeast, and I made many posts on the schizophrenic injections and what they do to you. And... Uh, in the whole medical industrial complex I've been talking about for eight years. So schizophrenic injections and Southeast, it's all tied in that. And I mean, little did I know. <laughs> That's exactly what was being sent to me was someone who uh, was too hard-headed to listen. And uh, he got himself hemmed up. I'm pretty sure what happened was they took him away and they put him in these places, if not worse places. You know, I'd feel bad, but he had, uh, he had disrespected me in so many ways um, when I was trying to tell him I'm here to help him. And I've been working for for people like him for a long time and I didn't even understand that when I said those words when I said those words I didn't understand that like to be honest like I felt kind of bad it's like what do you, I don't even know this dude like but I just assumed like I've been helping people like him for a long time 
And, uh, I mean, the world straight came. I heard his probation officer talking to him about injections and uh, uh, southeast. It's like, man, he's trying to tell me like he's out here. Uh, he's preaching and spreading the word of God. And I'm trying to tell him I'm like, I'm, I'm working to like make the system better. <laughs> and, and, and if you talk to me long enough, I might tell you I met some of the gods. And it, it feels like after they terrified me, after meeting them, that uh, the, those so-called gods. And he didn't like the word gods either. It's like, well, only one person claimed to be Yahweh. But uh, the, the angels, let's say the angels. Or the other people we can't name, the, the one, the chosen ones. Um, man, that was a, that's just another crazy day. Another crazy day of coincidences where I tell someone who, who's getting on my nerves that they need to calm down because I've been out here working for them and they aren't out here to protect me they are not here to guide me but I've been like working for them for like 10 years and they don't even know it or 20 or 30 who knows how many decades and then they get taken away and then hemmed up in the entire system I've been telling them I was trying to help protect them from you know it's hard to explain to someone in in 10 minutes what you've been doing for 30 years and and how it might protect them or benefit them but uh man that was that was another crazy day every day every day is this new amazing crazy day in this world around me and uh as much as it terrifies me scares me I am um, I can't help but think like why would I want it any other way because wow the roller coaster might drop down and then have to climb up the hill but it's about to drop down again and we're about to have some more fun man that's all I can keep thinking